You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, smile makeovers. According to my first guest, he says, for many people, if you change your smile, you can change your life. And we're talking about how small improvements made to your smile can make a big difference in not only how you feel about yourself, but how others perceive you. With us, we have North Carolina's cosmetic dentist, Dr. Highsmith. Dr. Highsmith, welcome to the program. Thank you, happy to be here. So for people that don't know your practice, uh, I mean, who's the typical patient that you see and uh, and what are the different uh, services you offer? We don't really have a typical patient. Uh, every, every case is unique, but a lot of what we focus on is cosmetic dentistry. Say somebody has never liked their smile and they can come in and have the next day walk out with a beautiful new smile. They can actually eat and chew with that. Um, a lot of dental implants, uh, People that have, have no teeth, you know, they need to lose their teeth. We can, you know, put things back together so they can chew and eat a steak with uh, with teeth that don't take in and out. Okay. Um, I'm a general dentist, so we do, you know, regular dentistry as well. But I tend to focus on those kind of things, more complex procedures that I've been trained to do. Okay. Now you brought a lot of photos, probably more than anybody on the program. So we'll have to we'll get to those photos. And I should mention, I'm not trying to side with you, mm -hmm. but uh, these are literally like extreme makeovers. Oh, yeah. These are complete complete changes. Mm -hmm. Now, on the world, you know, we should mention a little bit about you. Your book, Rejuvenate Your Smile. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about cosmetic dentistry. Yes. It's it's about why you want to improve your smile. Mm -hmm. Also, you taught, and I guess at this Las Vegas Institute, mm -hmm. seven uh, years for, for seven years. What is mm -hmm. that? What, what is um, Las Vegas Institute? It, you can think of it like it's like Juilliard for dentistry. Um, it's uh, it's generally regarded as one of the top dental education, postgraduate dental education places in the country um, where you learn cosmetic dentistry, but also how to get the bite correct. You can also help treat TMJ problems and give them a beautiful smile at the same time. Because you can have you know a nice smile, but if the bite isn't correct, you can break stuff. And we see this all the time. Somebody's had veneers done, and all of a sudden now the, edge, the, the teeth are loose or the edges are breaking and chipping. And if you get the bite correct, not only is it more comfortable. So the bite meaning how the teeth come together? The bite is how the, how the teeth fit okay. and what you do with them. And that is hugely important. And it has a lot to do with headaches, jaw pain, TMJ, clicking, locking. You know, people call it TMJ. But basically that means that your teeth don't fit properly. And that can cause a lot of problems that most people aren't even aware of. Is there a lot of that going on with uh, like veneers? Oh. Like people, they get veneers. Oh, it happens. They uh, still I, I redo a lot of those. Okay. So yeah, it, it happens. If, if, if the dentist isn't trained in getting the bite proper, then you can cause a lot of problems. Or um, you know, the patient may continue to have headaches okay. that uh, they had before because they haven't addressed that. Can I show you some examples sure, of how sure. the smile can really you know, change somebody's appearance? Deanie came in to see us so, about 13, 14 years ago, and she didn't like her smile. It looked a, it's not a bad smile. This is not unusual, but she didn't like it. It was aged. It was worn. She also had some bite issues, meaning she had some jaw pain. She had this pain in the back of her head. She tried everything for her. And what we did, we ended up doing a full mouth porcelain reconstruction with her, getting the bite proper for her, and we checked out the bite first before we make it in porcelain. And her head pain is gone, and it's, and it's been 13 years, and it's still gone. And so, you know, look at the after, as far as, oh, wow. well, this person, you know, look at the difference between, you know, this person looks 10 years younger. You yeah, see yeah. how all the, you know, she's got a broad smile to begin with, but it looked aged and worn. And, and look at the difference between the two. The, it's not only just the teeth, but also you can see it in her eyes, you can see it in the whole way she smiles, the way she carries herself. It's, it's just a different thing. Now, this lady's an actress. She does a lot of community theater, and she shared with me that when she got her smile improved, she could, it freed her up in order to express herself the way she wanted to, because she, she would kind of hold back. Say she's on stage doing a role, and it, it, she was not able to really smile the way she normally would. She just didn't like her smile. Well, and that's very common, but it's, it's magnified when you're on stage. I mean, a lot of people look at you. Okay. Um, and so she also got younger parts. I think you said, like, they're doing selfies on Facebook. Oh, yeah. And Instagram. Like, they're... Yeah. Well, you see a lot of selfies that <laughs> where, you know, you're taking a selfie, and they're smiling like this where they're not showing their teeth. But you know, once you've had this done, it's a, huge, it's a huge grin. Now, one of the most fun part of this is when they see their smile for the first time. And you think it's like you know, with the plastic surgeon where they take the bandages off and you get to see your new face or something like that. And this is just with, at the first visit when we put the temporaries on. So as soon as we've got those polished up a bit, we show them what they look like and they hold the mirror up. And the most common you know, thing is just, wow. And they're just <laughs> looking at it like, I can't believe it. 
a lot of happy tears. That's a good day. Uh, people, they've had a smile they didn't like for many, many years. And in one day, they look in the mirror and they see someone different. Like, how cool is that? But you say people with bad teeth are discriminated against. What do you mean by uh, that? Well, in an ideal world, that wouldn't be true. But unfortunately, this, you know, this is, you know, people are people. A friend of mine had, um, knocked a front, she's not a patient of mine, she told me this story, and she knocked a front tooth out, and she was in the process of getting, uh, she went to the dentist, she got an impression made for a little you know, temporary partial. It's kind of what they call it a flipper because you can flip it out with your tongue. They're not a lot of fun, but at least it replaces the tooth cosmetically and you're gonna wear it when you go out. And it was a couple of days before this got back from the lab, and so she said it was just amazing how differently people treated her. She told me that people treated her like she was an idiot. And she was just as intelligent as she was before. She just didn't have a front tooth right then. Now, for example, in the movies, if uh, any, any director would know that if you want to make somebody look like a shyster, basically the bad guy, you don't give them perfect teeth. You give them kind of dark teeth, gray teeth, a little crowded. Um, or if they want to look like they're dishonest, you, they might be overdone, like big, huge veneers. You know, think <laughs> okay. of Willy Wonka in the yeah. uh, as when Johnny Depp played that role. He had these huge veneers, and it just looked weird. Um, or I think there's like SpongeBob. There was a uh, an yeah, episode where yeah. one of the guys becomes a you know some kind of shyster, and they give him these huge. He was a salesman. Fake, he was selling something. And they give him these huge fake front teeth. So it's it's a, it's a stereotype that's out there. So if it's overdone, that's not good. But if your teeth just don't look good, people will make up stories about you that aren't true. Okay. So to hide that from you, basically people just will not smile. So they'll hide it. Now it's interesting. You know, We've all heard Tony Robbins talk about physiology and psychology. And for example, he'll say that if you slouch and you know, sort of look down all the time, eventually you'll feel depressed. If you're not smiling because you don't like the way your teeth are, are you going to be happy? You know, you've, got that, you've got that strike against you because your physiology will affect your psychology. So if you're smiling, it's hard to be depressed. Yeah. If you're standing up really straight, okay. it's hard to be depressed. If you're smiling, it's hard to be miserable if you're smiling. So, you know. <laughs> Put on so a, these put people on, smile more after you do this? Put on a happy face. Yeah, okay. It's harder to do if you don't, have, you don't like your smile. Let me show you another one. All right. This lady came in, um, did not like her smile. She'd had some old bonding on there. It had been there for longer than it should have, and it's just showing signs of age. So, we, so what we did is we did pour some veneers on her top teeth, and you know, when, she shot, when she saw the difference, this is one of those wow moments where she looks at the mirror and like, oh my gosh, you know, that's, okay. this is what, I, this is what I, I've always wanted. And she... You can see how it follows her lip. You can see the eye teeth are not quite pointed. It just, it's, all this is individualized to the individual patient so that it fits their face. And she tells me that my daughters are now my sisters. So that, <laughs> and I've seen her daughters, and it's a compliment because her daughter is be as beautiful as she is. And when you look at the before and after, she definitely looks younger. Now, these are porcelain, and so it's very different from the bonding. It doesn't stain. They don't chip. Think of you like your grandmother's porcelain teacups. It's had eight zillion cups of coffee <laughs> yeah, in it. Yeah. You wipe it out and it's white. So you brush your porcelain and the stain comes off. So you don't have the staining issue with porcelain, which is why we don't really do the bonding so much anymore. Let me show you another one. All right. Uh, this, you know, wonderful Kate lady came in. She's a public speaker. And you look at, look at the smile. This is like not unusual in anybody that's over 40 or 50 or so. The teeth are kind of worn, they're kind of yellow, and it's just the natural aging process that it happens to everybody. Now, and you can see how she's smiling, she's not really projecting Holding a big back smile. back a little bit. And so, one thing, she told me something very interesting, is that a psychologist years ago told her that when you, when you love somebody, you show that love for them when your face lights up when they walk into the room. And so she was kind nice. of holding back. She might hold her hand over her mouth. And she said she really didn't value, didn't express her value of other people by not being able to smile. And so look at the after. When she, look at the difference in the smile yeah, between wow. the before and after that. And so that is, you know, that's quite a difference. Doesn't and, look like the same person. I mean, yeah. it's really a, a, yeah. a big difference. Yeah. And you can imagine if she's doing a, doing a, a public, doing a speech, you know, the difference that makes in it's her like self-confidence. She looks more credible. I'm not trying to side yeah. with you, by the way. Yeah. But when I look at these, because look, on the phone, yeah. you're saying, Randy, a smile could really change somebody's life or a smile could make oh. a big difference. It's, and I'm a little skeptical. I'm thinking that sounds like a bit of an overstatement. But I think here it yeah. does change the appearance. Look at the difference. It's, it's, it's life-changing. Absolutely. Now, you, you know, I told you on the phone that here in California, mm -hmm. uh, where we're taping this, that I feel like I could spot veneers walking down the street. They seem to be big and bulky. I don't see that in, in, in here. 
is this, when I see big bulky veneers, is it, is that in the hands of the dentist yeah. or is that what the patient wanted? Combination uh, of both? Uh, What's your take on that? Probably a combination of both, but the, you know, sometimes patients will say, this is what I want. They'll bring in a picture from a magazine of, you know, somebody with, you know, big, huge teeth. And like, eh. It's our job to kind of you know tone that down a little bit and show them what you know what a, a natural beautiful smile can look like in their face, and so that's, we do that with with temporaries. So when we shape the teeth, we put temporaries on there, and you wear those around for at least a week or so. It's like a you, trial smile a kind trial of thing. Smile. Yeah, and so you know what you know you want to make sure you used to go to a dentist who does something like this so that you get to wear it around the block. If you got an expensive dress, you're not going to take it home without trying it on. This is like a way of trying on the dress. You want to make sure that the color is right, too light, too dark, just right. How's the size? How's the shape? Are they too long? Are they too short? There are a zillion little judgment you know, calls in how teeth are shaped. They're not all shaped the same. It has to fit your face, has to fit your personality. So the dentist actually needs to know you a little bit and get an idea of what you're looking for rather than having them all look the same. And you, you see that a lot. So there's a so. lot that goes into the design. You're part of that whole process? Oh, yeah. So you, what, you, you when they're there on the consultation, you give them examples of what it might look like? Yes. And we have a lot of photographs, like you see here. If you're seeing someone who's a cos who says they do cosmetic work, you want to make sure you see photographs of what their work is. A lot of times there'll, there'll be pictures on the wall, but they're generic. They bought them, on, you know, they bought them online. And so it needs to be their photographs so you have to of look their at work. The work. Oh, yeah. So you're part of this organization, this AACD. What is that? It's the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. And it's basically an organization devoted, as it says, to cosmetic dentistry. They have an accreditation process in which you present your own cases. There's a written exam. There's an oral exam. You present your cases in which you they have these examiners who are like the, the most picky people on the planet. Okay. And you've got this case blown up six feet wide, and they're trying to find anything wrong with it they can and so going through that process is rather lengthy, costly, and intimidating. Most people that start that process don't finish it. In North Carolina, I think last I checked, there were like six people who were accredited. Who've been through that? Been through that. And so like, probably like 3% of dentists in, in the world? Oh, way less than that. There's something like 300 in the world. Oh, is that right? Okay. So out of, you know, there are 180,000 dentists in the United States. So, it's a, so it's a find a thing. dentist if you're going to do this, right? For, if, if, it basically shows that that person has demonstrated that they know what they're doing, they've had a lot of training and a lot of experience okay. and then can produce the result that, that you're looking for. And so, and they have a website, aacd.com, where you can find out, you know, pe find people who are accredited. Or they could go to you. Or, the, or they can go to me. <laughs> or they can go to you. Yeah. Especially now, so in, what else? We have time for a few more photos. Okay. This young man came in, he was a piercing artist. And uh, he told me later, and it was fortunate that I was the only dentist that he had not bitten. So. He came in, and this is a good example of when you look at something like, you know, it's almost like bringing it back from the dead. You know, looking at the teeth, you know, your first thought is, oh my gosh, these are going to be dentures. But he didn't want to lose his teeth, and there was something there to work with. So we were able to, we were able to save those teeth and, you know, give him a nice, beautiful smile. Wow. And now, those look like re regular yeah. teeth. What are they? Uh, is that, that those, veneers? Those are, those are porcelain crowns. Um, now, after he had his teeth done, he went to nursing school. So, which is something he never would have had the confidence to do before with a smile like that. And so, that, talking about a smile being life-changing, that's a great example of that. One thing, this also increases your trust and credibility. Imagine like, at a job interview, which person are you going to hire? He does look not, more trustworthy. Yeah, yeah, not only because of the teeth, but typically, of course, we made him smile in the other picture. But you know, when you have a smile like that, you're not going to smile that much. It, it makes a difference. It's not just the teeth. It's how you feel hey, about it. You say it. it's life changing, like it, transformations in one day. We you see believe this. That. Yeah, we see this all the time. We see it in their eyes when they see their teeth. We see here in their stories when they come back in and let us know what their life is like after we've done their smile. So it is, it is huge. This is an example of where a small change can make a big difference. This young lady is a singer. She's on stage all the time, and she's got a couple of things wrong with a smile that she didn't really like. That black filling, the little gap there. Yeah, all we yeah. did was fix the filling and close the gap. And she's even more outgoing than she was wow. before. And she loves her smile. I mean, she was gonna, she was gonna smile before, but as far as when you're on stage singing, you don't want to have anything that holds you back. When you're dealing with the public or dealing with people, if there's anything that's holding your back, do something about it. Why not? It, may, it can make a difference in your life. Now with her, because it was interesting, you say a lot of these people have hated their smile mm -hmm. for like 10 years, yeah. 15 years. Oh. Are, are events trigger them doing something about it? Sometimes, Some, sometimes they are, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's a divorce, sometimes it's a new girlfriend. Sometimes it's the grandkids saying, 
Grandma, why are your teeth so yellow? This guy is a healthcare professional. A lot of wear on his teeth. And this is not uncommon. That's got to be unusual, though. <laughs> you never see it. We see it all the time. You, it's unusual to you because people that have a smile like that don't share it with you. They're not smiling. They right. smile like they smile like this. And because they're covering it up. Now, look at the after. The, so now that we, wow. we put porcelain on his teeth, we actually build up upper and lower teeth. So this basically, we did, we did his whole mouth in porcelain. And we were able to build the teeth up to normal size. And it's made a huge difference in just, you know, look at the smile. Look at the confidence that he has. I mean, it, He's it smiling really is before, a... but you can see the difference in his eyes. That it's, it's, he likes this a lot better. And it's much more comfortable too, for him, too. Were those teeth just small before? Or they're, they're worn down? They're worn down. They're worn down. And it happens all the time, where if, if it happens slowly, pa patients think that this is just kind of normal. So in the after, these are veneers. I mean, they don't look like veneers. That, those are porcelain. You can see it makes him look more sophisticated. And he, he's an educated yeah. person to begin with, but he looks more educated with the better smile. It's true. So let's do another one. All right. All right. Um, you have a lot of these photos. I do. Oh, this is just Did you bring all the ones you have, or you have oh. a lot more at the office? Oh, there's a lot more. OK. But wait, there's more. <laughs> wait, there's more. All right. Now, this lady comes in, and you know, just like the other one, she did not like her smile. She had kind of an underbite. It was similar to the other one. It was worn. You know, made it look made it look a lot older than she is. Um, the, the teeth didn't come together very well. She had kind of an underbite, and we were able to fix that by you know getting her the way the teeth come together, the bite All right. by you know taking care of that. It's a more comfortable bite, and it's a more it's a prettier smile. And so just look at the difference. Look at look at her eyes. Look at how she's smiling differently. Now when she comes in, she's smiling ear to ear, and it's, it's kind of like when we unveiled this the first time. She looked in the mirror. I mean, that's, the, that's another one of the wow moments because you go from this to this in one day. Do you ever get excited, like for example, the consult? Yeah. And maybe they're giving you their hard luck story about mm -hmm. how they don't like their smile. Yeah. Do you see the end result? Like, do you think, boy, this is going to be good? Oh yeah, and it's a lot of fun, and it's it's kind of sometimes hard to hold back because you can see, oh, I can. This is going to be great. I can do wonderful things with this, and so you, and also I can see how their life will be improved. So like they don't it, even know how good it's going to be. I know. And it's, it's sometimes it's hard to kind of tone down the enthusiasm <laughs> because it's like, oh, we can fix this. This is great. Yeah. And so, so you, you have know, to tone it down a little have, bit. Yeah, and you can't get too excited. But you, it's important for them to know what their options are. It's, it's my job to let you know, well, you we can do this or this. Here's how, here's how it can look. Here's some examples of cases we've done just like yours. And you can have the same result. Is this one of those things where people say, I should have done this a long time ago, like a woman like this? Oh, I hear that all the time. Uh, it, it is, that is a very common statement after having this done. So, wow, why didn't I do this 10 years ago? And you know, we hear that every day. They said, that, where were you my whole life, Dr. I, Highsmith? I, I was right that? here. <laughs> I've been here 30 years. Yeah. OK, yeah. good. Now, and this lady, um, the teeth aren't bad. It's a pretty, pretty good smile, though. Well, but she didn't like it. So you know, the only person that counts is the person whose smile it so is. So when you look at that, what do you see I that see you could fix on that? I see the wear. I see the color. I see the, it just looks straight across, and it makes it look older than she is. OK. And one thing that she told me after having the new smile is like, well, I know I'm getting older, but the smile is staying the same. The smile is you know, keeping me young. And so that's, you know, she loves that. Well, she looks great in the after. It's very nice. Randy, you said that you can spot veneers in Milo. Do those look like veneers to you? No, they don't. They look no. like really nice, clean teeth. Yeah. That's, that's the thing with experience, like AECD accreditation. You should, they should not look fake. Is it art, more art than science when it comes it's, to it's, veneers? It's, it's a combination. Uh, it's, uh, the art is a big part of it. So is it more art or more mm -hmm. science? I mean, is oh. this one of those things where you, the dentist has to have an eye for this? Well, yeah, you have to. It's a combination, but you know, in the real cosmetic work, the art is huge. I mean, it's because it's, it's sculpting. You're it's sculpting three-dimensionally, and it's also... You're a sculptor. Out, Yes, I've done, I've done a good bit of that as well. I, I mean, I've looked things. at some of your photos. Mm -hmm. of, you know, I don't know if we can show. Well, I guess we can on the show. You, uh, who's this? Uh, that's my wife. OK, so you sculpted top. her face? Yes, I did a bust of her in clay. And the other one is uh, Apollo and Daphne. It's a bronze, uh, bronze sculpture. Um, that's not a mold of her face? You just do it freehand? No, that was done freehand. Is that right? OK, but, uh, uh, but I, I love working with my hands. That's, what I, that's how I got into dentistry. I was doing uh, enamel, cloisonne enamels as in high school. And I would sell them in craft stores. And then I'm trying to figure out, well, you know, what do I want to do with my life? And so that's how I ended up going into dentistry, because I could combine the art and science. I enjoyed science as well, and I enjoyed the art. And dentistry is a great combination of the two.
It's arts and crafts. Now, somebody that's had the training, you were a clinical instructor for, mm -hmm. for cosmetic dentistry, you wrote a book on cosmetic dentistry, you got great photos. Does it cost more to go to a cosmetic dentist like okay. you? It doesn't have to. Okay. Uh, the, uh, but also, you know, think of, you know, get it done right the first time, because I, I redo a lot of stuff. And so if you do it once, pay for it once, and then say you're unhappy with the result, and you have to get it done, and, you know, what does that cost? Yeah, I mean, that's, okay. that's not a good thing. And, you know, that's, I mean, we do that a lot. All right. And so time for a couple more. Okay. Not to rush you or interrupt okay. you. I just want to let okay. you know that okay. we are short on time. Here's another one. This lady did not like her smile. She's got this one tooth she keeps gluing in with super glue. Really? Um, yeah, and she didn't like all of them, but especially that one. Um, the back teeth were not comfortable. They didn't fit together well. And so, and she's a cardiac nurse. And she's in an area where she's dealing with people under very stressful conditions. And it's her job to make them feel better. And she's trying to do that. And she doesn't feel good about her smile. So what we did for her, we did porcelain upper and lower teeth and got her bite balanced and got her smile the wow. way she wants it. And look at her. There's, there she is with her dog. She's, <laughs> you know, she's doing much better. At, you know, she has much more self-confidence. She gets compliments. And now she's into scuba diving. And so she, like, it's one thing, it's like, if you don't feel real confident about your teeth, are you going to be conf confident about holding a regulator in your mouth when you're 100 feet under the water? All right. So, you know, she's loving that now. Now, this young lady, she, it's not a bad smile, but she didn't like it. They're a the little yellow, there's some staining, there's some spots here and there. She didn't really like the outline of them. And so what we did for her is we did thin porcelain veneers on the teeth. And you can see how, like, the two front teeth were a little bit big, the canines are a little bit pointy, and all that sort of smoothed out and evened out. And so she has a much more beautiful, much more sexy smile. It's a very smile. pretty smile. Yeah. yeah. Now she owns a restaurant. She's in the, with the public. All because all of her teeth. Well, no, but that's a part of it. It's a part of it. Just it's a, it's a confidence thing. Because your it, charisma has changed. Yeah, it's a confidence thing. It's how you feel about your smile. You know, many people would be happy with that smile before, but she's more confident with the new smile, and she loves it. So when should somebody then take care of their smile or get some cosmetic dentistry? When it bothers them. All right. As soon as as soon as it, you find out that it's holding you back, as soon as you find out that you're not sharing your smile as much as you know, as much as you normally would, when you discover that your smile doesn't mirror who you are inside. And that happens a lot. You know, say if you're not smiling, people might think that you're unhappy or grumpy, and, you're, and I'm not, I'm happy. So have your smile show who you are. And as soon as you realize that, that's the time to do something about it. Why not? Do I have time for three more? Okay, three okay, quick okay, ones. Okay, all right. This lady came in, look, look at her smile. All right. And just like the other ones, worn, looks older than she is. And she also had some significant jaw pain issues. You know, so it took a while to get her bite worked out. She worked in conjunction with a chiropractor to get her bite leveled to where things are comfortable for her. We got that where everything feels better. And then gave, did upper and lower porcelain. And you can see on the after That's what that does nice. with her smile. I mean, look at her eyes. She's much more comfortable and not only physically, but also emotionally as far as with the smile. So if people that have also have a TMJ problem, we can not only fix their bite and make them more comfortable, but also give them a beautiful smile, more self-confidence, just like we talk about with the other pure cosmetic cases. Sometimes it's a combination of function and cosmetics, because if, it, if it's in the right place, it works better. So it's a combination of the function and making it beautiful at the same time. And it really has changed her appearance. I mean, when I look at her before, she looked like a pleasant, nice kind of a grandmother. Now she yeah. looks like she could be the CEO of some uh, yeah. tech company. I yeah. mean, she looks, uh, yeah. I mean, it really yeah. gave her like a yeah. more youthful look. Yeah, this, I think everybody would agree with that. Yeah, the self-confidence is, is huge. That's, what, that's a common thread with people who had this done. They tell me I'm just much more self-confidence, much more confidence in my smile. And it goes, and it affects their whole life. So here's another one. All right, take a look at that smile. Not bad, but uh, she didn't like it. It was kind of dark, kind of worn. You couldn't just do whitening with this one? She tried whitening, and whitening doesn't always work for everybody. Okay. But uh, you know, no, no problem with trying. You can go to Crest and get some, you know, get some Crest white strips. You know, that's not a problem. But if that doesn't do what you want, then you may have to look at the next level, such as porcelain. So we did porcelain veneers on very thin, conservative porcelain veneers, um, not crowns on her teeth. And you can see the way that, the, the, that follows the lip line, where the eye teeth are just have the right amount of point to them. It fits your face. And you know, the color is not too white. A lot of times people will come in and they may say they want this like toilet bowl white shade. And yeah. really try to talk them out of that. But that would look horrible in her. But that shade fits her beautifully. And she looks awesome. Now this, this lady, worn teeth, also jaw pain, some head pain issues as well. This lady did not like her smile, just like some of the other ones, kind of worn, they looked older than she is. 
thin, kind of dark, kind of worn. She'd ground her teeth down a bit. Um, and so when, when I looked at it, I knew we had something to work with so we could have a dynamite final result with this. She also had some head pain, some jaw pain as well. So we got her bite corrected as well. And at, with the after, we put porcelain upper and lower teeth, <laughs> got her a new nice. bite and a, a whole new smile. This be the way it fits her face. It you know, follows the lower lip. The eye teeth you know, look look real. Now look at the difference. I mean, she's smiling before, but you know, it's a totally different smile in the yeah, after. Yeah. Not only the eyes, but the, the, the whole face lights up when she has confidence in her smile. And that's just what this is all about. So you, like for example, when I look at this after, like the curves or the pointiness of the mm -hmm. canines, this is all designed by you? This is all by design. And okay. you know, we try that in a trial smile first to make sure that we both like the way it looks. And then once we approve that, then the final porcelain is made. But we don't give the lab the final orders until you wander around the block for a little bit of time to make sure that it fits your face, fits your personality, you like the color, and then we send it to the lab and tell them to make the final porcelain. So we're out of time. You yeah. even have more photos like this oh, yeah. on your website. Yes. Plenty to choose from. Final message to somebody watching this, they don't like their smile. Uh -huh. But look, nobody likes going to the dentist, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> so what's your message to them? They don't like their smile. Do something about it. Okay. Why not? You know, we have the technology. It lasts a long, long time. We can, you can see what we can do, and we can do this for you. So when you see people that it's obvious they have money, let's say they've got a, a, an expensive watch, mm -hmm. they're driving an expensive car, but they have this older, worn-out smile, is it their fear of the dentist that's keeping them from doing it or not really mm -hmm. realizing how important the smile is? What's your it, take? It's some of both. A lot, fear is a lot of it. A lot of times people had a bad experience when they were young. They had a bad experience with the dentist. They got beat up by a dentist when they were a kid. But, you know, we have sedation. We have ways of getting around that. You know, we have, you know, we can do oral sedation. We can even bring in a medical anesthesiologist to, you know, knock you out. Have you done so, that before? I mean, oh, yeah. for certain people? Yeah, we have a relationship. You know. So for the dental phobics, yes. they get a sedation pill. Oh, yes. And they're fine. Oh, it makes, a, it makes a huge difference. You know, when you do that, you go home, you go to sleep for a couple hours, and you wake up, you kind of uh, kind of remember bits and pieces of that, and it was not a big deal. Now, we, so. we've even mentioned, I mean, you're big on technology. You've written a book on cosmetic. I mean, you have, like, four lasers in your practice. I'm a, I'm a geek. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you have all the new stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah but uh, it, the technology makes a lot of this easier, more predictable, faster, easier for the patient, and it gives us better results. So, you know, why not? Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Thank you Good much. stuff. And we're going to have to have you back on the program also talking about no more dentures because you do a lot of dental implants in your practice as yes, well. So absolutely. thanks again. Thank you much. Thank You've you. been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.